The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. The Equitable Life Assurance Society has nearly 8,000 trained representatives from coast to coast serving over four million members. Tonight, one of our Equitable Society representatives has a brief but important message on Social Security. You probably read about it in the newspapers. The Social Security law has been changed. Benefits are up from 50 to 100 percent, and 10 million more Americans have been added to the Social Security rolls. These changes have a great effect on your family's future. Take a fresh look at just how things stack up for you, your wife, and your children. To make this fresh look easy and clear, Equitable has revised its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Mr. Keating will tell you more about this chart in just 14 minutes. Don't miss this important message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. And now, before the dramatic portion of tonight's program begins, we bring you a message of great importance to every American from the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover. Mr. Hoover's message is, and I quote, Protect your country. The President of the United States on July 24, 1950, requested all law enforcement agencies, patriotic organizations, and you to report all information relating to espionage, sabotage, and subversive activities to your FBI. Be alert. A watchful citizen can save many American lives. Report only facts. Avoid reporting malicious gossip or idle rumors. The nearest FBI office is listed on page one of your telephone directory. Tonight, FBI file number 290. Its subject, car theft. Its title, The International Heist. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation involves one of the major crime problems of the nation, auto theft. It is brought to you at this time because the records of your FBI show not only that the value of stolen automobiles last year ran well over the $60 million mark, but that during the first six months of this year, auto thefts in the cities of the country rose more than 3%. You listeners who drive cars can help fight the thousands upon thousands of car thieves who daily roam our streets. You can fight them in one simple way. When you park your car, Lock the ignition, then lock the doors. Your local, state, and federal police arrest an average of 51 auto thieves every day. You can help see to it that new ones don't rise to take their place. Tonight's file opens on a desolate dirt road in a southwestern state as a man and woman in a late model convertible make their way slowly through the night toward the Mexican border. Nice road. Real cheerful, too. Ten miles back, we passed a house. We'll be crossing the border soon. Then what? More no houses? There'll be houses in Estancia. Oh, I hope they got a dentist there. That tooth still bothering you? Yeah. Well, you get some tequila in you, that'll straighten it out. What's that? Coyotes. Ever heard them before? No, and I wish I'd kept my record clean. What are you dousing the lights for? We're getting close. Close to what? The border. It's about a mile away from here. Ditch the cigarette, huh? Why? Somebody could see it. Look, where are we going? To war? Do like I say, huh? Okay. Larry, up the road there. Huh? Light. See it? Yeah. That looks like a flashlight. That's the signal. Signal? For what? You'll see. What are you slowing down for? To talk to the guy. But what are you going Shut to... up, will you? Buenas tardes, senor Larry. Uh, hello, Pedro. El camino todavía está limpio. Prendes las luces y vaya derecho. Thanks a lot. 
Buena suerte. Right. Now, what was that all about? Oh, he told me it was okay to turn the car lights and go right ahead through the arroyo. Arroyo? What's an arroyo? A dry river bottom. Are we crossing into Mexico? Yeah. Well, don't they have a bridge? Judy, you don't use a bridge when you drive in a stolen car. Meanwhile, at an FBI field office some distance away, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just approaching the desk of Agent in Charge Fallon. Did you send for me, Mr. Fallon? Oh, yes, Taylor, sit down. Thank you. The police in Robbinsville arrested somebody named Carter this morning on an auto theft charge. I want you to go up and interview him. All right, sir. I don't know whether you've seen any of the reports, but there's been a ring stealing cars on the West Coast and driving them to Mexico. No, sir, I haven't. We knew they must have doctored the car someplace in this country because the Border Patrol have a sharp eye for stolen cars. Yes, I know. They helped me break a case last year. It uh, turns out this man Carter in Robbinsville was the drop. Oh? When the police dug around in Carter's junkyard, they came up with dozens of old license plates. Some of them turned out to be from cars that have been recovered in Mexico. Have the Robbinsville police questioned him, sir? Only until they established the federal violation. Then they called here to turn him over to us. Oh, I see. Now, after you finish interviewing him, Taylor, get a warrant and examine all books and records at the junkyard. All right, sir. Carter isn't the head man of this ring, but through him we might work our way up. Does the kiosk? That will be all. Yeah, and tell Marion I want to see her, huh? Very good, senor. How's the tooth, honey? A little better. Well, two more tequilas and you won't even know what's in your mouth. <laughs> hey, the guy you work for owns this place? Hey, he's got a piece of it. That dame over there runs it, the one on her way over here. She in on the car racket, too? Judy, the girl can get into trouble asking questions. Have a good time, everybody. Get up and dance. Well, hello, Larry. Hi, Marion. This is Judy. Hi. Hello. Better go powder your nose, honey. Huh? It's shiny. But I just... Go finished... ahead, baby. I'll meet you at the bar. Okay. Marion, where's George? Somebody invited him fishing. Who's the doll? Oh, a friend of mine. He shouldn't have brought her. Oh, she came for the ride and some laughs. Well, George won't like it. He'll be unhappy enough about Carter. What's the matter with Carter? He got collared. That car I brought down, I got off him day before yesterday. Well, that's the last thing anybody will get from him for a long time, except a letter asking for cigarettes. Yeah, that's a tough break. Nobody tells you coming down here, did they? No, not unless they did it by plane. Hey, when does George get back? Tomorrow morning. Well, then I can go looking for action tonight, huh? Go any place you like. Just be back here tomorrow. Fallon, are you busy? Oh, come in, Taylor. Thank you. Get anything at Robbinsville? Well, not from Carter, sir. I interviewed him yesterday afternoon. Every time I mentioned the license plates, he said the kids who play around the yard must have buried them there. Mm. Did you go over to the yard? After I got through talking to him. I examined every file in his office and found one interesting letter from a man named Larry Howard. Mm, who's he? He's a known thief, sir. Convicted twice for auto theft. Wanted by us. According to this letter, Howard's the runner for the ring. Well, I'll wire Washington and get his complete record. Here's his picture, sir. Uh-huh. The police here had it in their files. I have copies made. All right. Oh, Larry Howard's letter also mentioned that he had run into somebody named Judy and was bringing her along for the ride. You've been able to identify her? Well, the letter was written on stationery from the Central Hotel in Lakeport. I dropped by there on the way back. I examined the register for that day. A woman named Judy Dixon was staying there and checked out the same day that Larry Howard did. You've been able to locate any record on this Judy Dixon? No, sir. She didn't have one at Lakeport or here, but... I did get a description from the clerk at the hotel. Good. Uh, she's blonde, about five feet three, weighs about 100 pounds. I better send that information along to Washington, too. All right. Oh, I found one other thing, Mr. Fallon. It might mean something, and again, it might not. What's that? Well, I talked to one of the employees at Carter's junkyard. He told me Carter got quite a bit of mail from River City, Texas. River City? I looked it up, sir. It's right on the border. Uh, get the next plane down there, Taylor. I'll call the sheriff and let him know you're coming. Who's there? Marion. It's not locked. Well, oh, 
How are you, Marion? I'll be okay if you'll stop taking these fishing trips. What happened now? Well, put that thing down, I'll tell you. I have to get this reel unsnarled. Well, the first bad news is about Carter. He was pinched. Uh, hand me that knife, Marion, please. Maybe you didn't hear me. Your man Carter's in the ever loving can. I heard you, and I don't like it, but there's nothing we can do about it. Bad news number two is about Larry. What happened to him? He brought a dame with him. Hmm. Here we are. It's coming now. Look, will you put that thing down and listen to me? I'm not unsnarling this line with my ears. I haven't missed a word you've said. And number three is Pedro stayed drunk for two days last week. He's done that before. But this time he's around the saloons flashing a lot of money and saying he worked for you. To top it off, he let slip at one place that you were running hot cars. Well, as I say, there isn't much to be done about Carter. Well, suppose he talks. He won't. That leaves Larry and Pedro. What are you going to do about them? Well, I think I've got it. There's one more car ready to be brought across. That's right. Tell Larry to take his girl back to the States and pick up the car. Well, what about Pedro? Oh, just have him drop by here. I'll talk to him myself. <laughs> Sheriff Perkins? Yes, that's right. I'm Jim Taylor, FBI. Here my credentials. Well, nice to meet you, Taylor. Well, thanks, Sheriff. Same here. Been expecting you. Your agent in charge called this morning. Oh, you tell you why I'm down here? Mm-hmm. He also told me about this Larry Howard you're looking for. Hey, you got anything in your files on him? Well, no, nothing under that name. Well, maybe you'll recognize him from this picture, then. Mm, no, no, he's new to me. I distributed a few of those on the way over here. Who to? The immigration officers down at the bridge. I guarantee you one thing. Howard's as good as caught if he tries to cross that bridge. Of course, there's another angle to think about. Even if those cars are being run through River City, it doesn't necessarily mean they're being taken over the bridge. No. How else can you cross the border? We had some flash floods here a couple of weeks ago. Could be they washed out part of the international fence. Well, it takes quite a flood to do that, doesn't it? They were bad this year. The Border Patrol keeps a good watch on that kind of thing, as you know, but they're even more undermanned than I am. Mm -hmm. Well, it's too dark for a plane to inspect the fence tonight, but let's go over and ask them if they'll fly a special watch for us first thing in the morning. Pedro. Is that you, Senor George? Yes. Where are you? In here, in the brush. Oh. This way, Marion. Any sign of Larry yet? I have been here two hours. He has not come. What's the price that he don't show up at all? He'll be here. Hey, goodness, it's cold out here tonight. I have some tequila, senor. Look, put that away. You didn't have drinking last week. The Please, last... Marion. Yes. This ought to be Larry. Well, I hope so. Go out and meet him, Pedro. Well, oui, Senor George. We will start, Senor Larry. Uh, hello, Pedro. I'll clear up ahead. It's Larry, all right. Yeah. Larry has just stopped being a problem. It is done, Senor George. Good work, Pedro. The girl wasn't with him, was she? No, Senor Larry was alone. Well, at least he followed those instructions. We go back now? Yes. Uh, you'd better let me have the gun. Here. Thanks. I... Well, Marion, let's get back to the cafe and get a drink. I, I need something to take away this chill. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now an announcement from the Equitable Life Assurance Society on its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. 
The new 1950 edition of this popular chart has been completely revised to bring it up to date with the recent changes in the Social Security law. Remember, Social Security benefits have now gone up 50 to 100 percent, and about 10 million new people have been made eligible for Social Security benefits. In either case, this fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers is just what the doctor ordered. Imagine for a minute that death has deprived your family of its breadwinner. His wages have stopped. But the wife and children still have to live, and living costs plenty these days. How much money will they need for food, clothes, and all the other items required to keep a family running? The fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers will give you a reliable answer. With their new Social Security benefits, how many additional dollars will they need every week to be well-fed, well-housed, well-clothed until the youngest child finishes high school? In five minutes, the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers gives you an answer you can trust guides you every step of the way with simple, easy-to-understand pictures. Once you have the facts before you, you can plan intelligently. Chances are that with your present life insurance and your new Social Security benefits, only a small amount of additional life insurance will give your family complete security. Your equitable representative will be glad to work out a sound program for you. The first step is to ask him for the revised fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. No charge, of course. So get in touch with your equitable representative. All right, care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The International Heist. Pedro Portales, the man who killed Larry Howard, was a Mexican. His boss, the man who instigated the killing and was therefore equally guilty, was a citizen of the United States. Criminals are to be found in each nation, and in just about the same relative number as we find here in the United States. Neither nationality, ancestry, color, nor creed has anything to do with a person becoming a criminal. Criminality involves personal responsibility. A man joins the army of lawbreakers wherever he may be because he possesses the common attribute of criminals the world over, a consuming lust to get what he wants, if necessary, by force. Tonight's file continues at the office of Sheriff Perkins the following morning as FBI Special Agent Taylor is entering. Sheriff, the immigration men down at the bridge still don't have anything for us. The uh, Border Patrol has, though. Oh, that plane back already? No, but it radioed in. They found a section of the fence washed out by those floods. They spotted a car in the Arroyo, landed to inspect it. There was two bodies there, one behind the wheel and the other in some tall brush close by. No, who were they? Well, neither one had any identification on him, and the car was stripped. Which way was the car headed? Toward uh, Mexico. Do you know whether it's a stolen car? The Motor Vehicle Bureau's checking that angle now. Uh-huh. Sheriff, tell me, was the car a new convertible? Well, yes, but... Uh, That's what this mob specializes in. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, this uh, package came for you. Special delivery. Oh, thank you, Sheriff. Oh, good. These are pictures of a girl named Judy Dixon. My agent in charge tell you about her? Uh, she's Larry Howard's uh, girlfriend, isn't she? Yeah, that's right. Well, let's distribute these, too. All right. I'll have one of my deputies handle it. We'd better get to that washout. Border Patrol flying us over? No, they don't have to. It's uh, close enough to drive. Fine. Let's get started. George! Yes, Marion? Where are you? Back here in the closet. Oh, what plant? Well, Mr. Powder. What? You wouldn't be running out, would you? <laughs> Don't be silly. And what are you packing for? A fishing trip. George, unless you've got a bad memory, you ought to remember the organization's a little short-handed. We're going to need some new men. We'll get replacements next month. And what happens till then? We stay out of action, give things a chance to cool off. You know, I had another reel someplace here. How long are you going to be gone this time? About a month. When do you leave? In the morning. I'll see you at the club tonight. (laughs) 
The Arroyo is just ahead, Taylor. Now well, we made good time. You can, if you know these back roads. Hey, there's a car. Mm-hmm. That's somebody from the Border Patrol standing by it? No, he's a deputy of mine who flew with him this morning. Oh. Hello, Sheriff. Morning. Jonesy, meet Jim Taylor of the FBI. Glad to know you, Taylor. Same here, Jones. Well, let's go take a look at that car. Hey, Sheriff. Yeah, what? Look, the man in the car. That's Larry Howard. Say, you're right. Uh, His being dead isn't likely to help us. No. Jones, you put this fingerprint powder on the steering wheel? Yeah. I had a kit in the plane, and I dusted off the whole car. Find anything? No. Everything's been wiped clean. Couple sets of footprints here. Yeah, I noticed that. Looks like they start over in that tall brush. Yeah, that's where the other body is. A little beyond it, there are quite a few tire tracks. Quite a few? Mm-hmm. Come on over, I'll show you. Say, maybe Larry Howard was ambushed by this other man and... I don't think so, sure. There are no skid marks back of Howard's car, which means he didn't stop suddenly, so he couldn't have been surprised by anything. I'd say he knew whoever came out of those bushes to talk to him. That uh, other body's right over there. Well, we'd better leave them both alone till the coroner gets here. Ah, uh, this is the start of those tire tracks. That's a little damper down here. Glad it is. Makes the tracks nice and clear. Jones is right, Sheriff. These tracks are made by different cars. Mm-hmm. You know, this must be where they've been crossing the border. I could put a man on duty here, and if they try... No, no, if we're right about Howard's murder being an inside job, Sheriff, they've probably written off using this road anymore. Well, we're in a fine spot. The only person who could tell us anything is in that car dead. Wait and... a minute. Wait a minute. There's somebody else who might be able to give us all the answers we need. Who? Judy Dixon, Larry Howard's girlfriend. Come on, let's try and find her. Sheriff Perkins. Jim Taylor, Sheriff. Anything come in? No, not a word. I've covered every hotel in town. We've plastered her picture all... Uh, pardon me a minute, Taylor. Sure. They did? How long ago? Thanks. Word just came in on the other phone. About Judy Dixon? Yeah, she was seen at the Kit Kat bar an hour ago. Let's meet there as soon as you can make it. You get anything here, Taylor? No, not much. A bartender said she was here on a bender. That means she'll probably be hitting some of the other bars. Well, they're all in this section, aren't they? Yeah, within two blocks. Fine, let's cut the list in half, check every one of them, and meet back here. You had better luck than I did, Taylor. Well, that's what kept me, Sheriff. I picked up a trail. She hit four saloons after this one. And then what? Well, that's as far as I could trace her. But she left this package on the bar at the last place. Yeah, well, what's it from? Gum, but a special kind of gum that might lead us to her. Come on. Another drink, George? No, thanks. Senora Marian. Oh, what is it? A lady at the bar to see you. Which one? That the blonde lady at the end. George, you know who that is? No. Larry's Ding. Oh, well, what's she doing here? Well, I don't know, but we better go see. Now, remember, Marion, Larry was killed by a bandit. Yeah, I know. Oh, there you are. Look, what did you do to my boyfriend? Oh, we just heard about it, hon. I can't tell you how shocked it was. I guess some bandit tried to rob him. That was no bandit. I saw his picture in the paper. That was a man called Pedro. He worked for you in that stolen car wreck. Be quiet. Who's going to drive your stolen cars now? Who's going to take Pedro's place and wave the flashlight? Hurry and take her back to your office. Just a minute, please. Huh? I'm interested in the answers to those questions, too. Why? I'm a special agent of the FBI. So what? You can't even pinch anybody's cheek down here. No, but I can do a little checking, and I have. Your name, for instance, is George Mitchell. That couldn't have been hard to find out. No, the difficult part was locating that garage where you repaint the stolen cars. Have you found out everything you want? I think so, thanks. I'm afraid it won't do you much good that waiter standing behind you has a gun under his tray. Oh, so 
Oh, he has. When you get to the end of the bar, go out that door. All right. Start walking. I'll come along with you straight. Oh! Mitchell, I'd advise you not to add any more murders to your record. Thank you for the advice. You know, we might have believed Larry Howard was killed by a bandit if you hadn't been careless enough to kill Pedro with the same gun. Are you the only one who knows about that mistake? I think so. Then I've got nothing to worry about. You won't be telling anybody. Go ahead, right through that door. Alto, what say I What? Thank you, Captain Otero. Now, will you have one of your men go inside and arrest the woman? Then we'll all go to your office. George Mitchell and Marion Belmond were extradited to the United States, where they were tried and convicted for the murders of Larry Howard and Pedro Portales. Each received a sentence of life imprisonment in the state penitentiary. Because the gum Judy Dixon had been chewing was used to deaden the pain of a toothache, Agent Taylor and Sheriff Perkins canvassed River City dentists and located her. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is a good illustration of the cooperation between various law enforcement agencies. In this case, for example, your FBI was aided by the local police at Robbinsville, who arrested the junkyard dealer, by the county sheriff at River City, by the motor vehicle bureaus of several states, by the United States State Department, by the United States Immigration and Naturalization Service, by the United States Customs Bureau, and, of course, by the Mexican Federal Judicial Police. To all of them, your FBI expresses profound gratitude, firm in the knowledge that so long as such cooperation exists, crime will never be a profitable career. In just a moment, you will hear about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, another quick message from our Equitable Society representative on the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. As an equitable representative, I know what a big help this chart has always been to parents. And now that it's been revised to fit the recent changes in Social Security, it's even more valuable than ever. And it's still free. Why don't you get one? Just ask your equitable man for the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Or send a postcard care of this radio station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. File number 291. Its subject, Interstate Lottery. Its title, The Baffled Bookkeeper. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Walter Catlett, Herb Ellis, Florence Lake, Henry Morgan, Ruth Parrott, Joe Vitale, Roland Winters, and Carlton Young. This is your FBI, a Jerry Devine production, was directed by Sid Goodwin. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Baffled Bookkeeper on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. 